Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to address a question uh, from Kenneth M. Chiochio. I butchered that, I'm sure. WB3JFR. And he says, I have seen NFED dipoles, such as MCOM2 and MCOM3, used with a counterpoise wire, or let's see, used with a counterpoise wire. Let's read that again. I have seen NFED dipoles, such as the MCOM2 and MCOM3, used with the counterpoise wire, or actually tied to a ground rod. Was wondering if one is better than the other. My ground rod is eight feet down. By the way, your show is one of the best, if not the best. Well, thank you very much, Kenneth. Uh, I appreciate that very much. Okay, I'm going to show you what he's talking about. We're going to look here at the unit. This is the uh, big ballon. Uh, let's uh, come out here. Okay, I'm going to show you what he's talking about. This is the uh, infed halfway from my antennas. Okay, and it's got coax connector here, and it's got an unun in it uh, that is um, about uh, 49 to 1 or so. And the ground, the shielding on this is attached to this, and the other end of the secondary winding goes to this right here, okay? So um, a counterpoise is some sort of reactance that the uh, unit can work against. It wants to push a little energy there and then get it right back. Okay, it's different from a ground, although you can use a ground in this case. Now let me show you how uh, I connected it when I had it up. We had the um, this unit here, which has the coax down here, has uh, a place with a, a wing nut down here, uh, the wing nut over here with the wire up here, and then this went up um, for a long ways. Now the question is, because this thing is at the end of the dipole, the dipole is a dipole, okay, the dipole is going to radiate like a dipole, but this transformer in here, the reactants in here, is going to want to push a little energy this way and then bring a little energy back in. Now, in my case, I had a 50-foot piece of coax, that's my standard connector for testing antennas, comes over here to a lightning arrestor, which is connected to a ground rod. So the shield in this is connected to ground over here. There's 50 feet of it. I did not need and did not use and did not try a counterpoise because my cable was so long that this, the shield on the cable, acted as the counterpoise, and so it went down the outside of the shield, but that was grounded right here, so it didn't go any further than that. Now, you may find that if you've got a different setup, uh, for example, if this is longer or if it's really short, um, you may want to experiment with a counterpoise. It can be 10 to 20 feet long, okay? That's about all that you need. The purpose of the counterpoise is to just give this balance something to work against. Um, and so this, by the way, is the giveaway for this month, this antenna um, and uh, all its wire. It's all here, okay, including the connector on the end. Um, now a lot of antennas, including vertical, sometimes like to have a counterpoise. Now if we spread these wires out in a flat plane and circle the vertical, we are actually creating a radial field, which is again reactive. The pushes energy into the radial field and it comes back up. Um, the radial field also acts a bit like a ground 
and my vertical antenna is grounded separately from the radial field, the ends of the radials are all open. Okay, so you can shove energy down it and it will come right back. Okay, and that really helps uh, with the performance of the antenna. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about what a counterpoise was. I would, uh, if I were you, try the antenna without it. And if you've got your setup like mine, you've got a coax that comes to a lightning arrestor just as it comes into the house. Now, say you're operating portable and you're sitting on a picnic bench out in the middle of the wilderness. Um, you may end up having to use the counterpoise. Otherwise, you'll get RFI from here and you'll have to experiment with the length of the counterpoise. You can roll it up or draw it back on itself or something like that and experiment till you get rid of the RFI or you can connect that to a ground rod. You don't need to, you, well you can connect it directly to a ground rod, but I'd give it about 10 feet in here just to give it a little reactance in the middle that it can use as part of the counterpoise. Now the difference between a counterpoise and a ground is this. The counterpoise is reactive, it stores energy and sends it back. The ground is ground and electrons go there to die. So you'll get this traffic one way down into here and then that's ground, it's held at ground, it's shorted right there at ground, okay? Now there will be some reactants in the cable Remember, every piece of uh, transmission line is a transformer of some sort. So there will be a non-zero reactance here that it can work against. And my 50 feet, 50 foot of coax uh, worked just fine with this antenna. I was extremely pleased with the results and I'm happy to make this a giveaway. I bought this with channel funds. In other words, with money that you guys gave me, okay? I bought this with channel funds. I have tested it. I have talked about it. Um, I've shown you what I learned about it. And now I would like to give it back to you. So here's how that works. So this is giveaway number two. Giveaway number one was a book. Uh, giveaway number two. All right. Um, and uh, it's going to be this antenna. Nice antenna, very nice antenna. Um, I had it up as an inverted V. I had each end, uh, one end is the um, unun, the other end was just the other end of the wire. I uh, had them down fairly low at, at seven feet and then the center up about 20 feet. And it worked really well and that is a configuration that they talk about in here. It's one you can use. Now in 80 meters and 40 meters and probably 30 meters your signal is going to go largely straight up so you'll be uh, using it as an NVIS antenna to talk to nearby hams. Um, when you get up around 20 the antenna starts to perk up and notice. When you get up in 17, 15, 12, and 10 uh, it's plenty high and you'll be able to get some good long distance and uh, uh, with the upcoming sunspot cycle it's a very nice antenna. Um, it's 130 feet long so you, you need a fairly large space for it or you can let the ends uh, droop down uh, see what you get. Okay so here's how to do it. It's totally free to you. Send a postcard, QSL card or simple one page letter by snail mail to P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. On whatever you send, make sure to include the giveaway number, in this case, two. Include your name and call sign and shipping address. And I'm doing this in the USA because shipping overseas is extremely expensive. So um, we will uh, ship anywhere in the USA, uh, of course, free of charge. This is totally free to you. Please include your phone number in case I have questions. So I need your name, call sign, shipping address, and your phone number. Please nothing else. Though if you want to send a picture of you and your station, 
I may be able to show these during the live stream, which will be September 30th. Electronic submissions will not be accepted. The drawing will take place on the live stream held on Thursday evening U.S. time on September 30th. Note that I pay the shipping, so it's all totally free to you. I hope to do something like this every month. Now, note that after the drawing, all entries will be discarded and no information will be kept or transcribed. A guy by the name of Tom won the book and I put his QSL card back in the package, sent it back to him. And um, this is what I've got now for uh, entries uh, into the thing here so far. By the way, uh, the U.S. Post Office still does make postcards. They're cheaper than first-class postage, and they're, they have forever stamps for postcards now. So if you get a postcard from uh, the uh, post office, it's just the charge for the actual postage, and the card itself is free. Okay, so I think, um, let's see. I hope to do something like this every month. Note that after the drawing, all entries will be discarded. No information will be kept, transcribed, sold, or in any other way used. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to decastlercom support and picking a way that you find most helpful. Um, I want to point out Patreon. Uh, if you are a patron of mine through Patreon, uh, you will have the chance to see one video a week early, several days early. Uh, we put it up on Patreon for uh, the patrons up there to take a look at it early. Um, and I'd encourage more of you to do that. I'm only getting like 20 views up there, whereas I get like two to 5,000 views on uh, videos on YouTube. Uh, so I just want to make sure you know that that benefit is available to you as a patron. Okay, um, please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. Don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.